Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in the previous video we created this AI NPC shop which allows us to sell items and buy items from this NPC. Now there are quite a few things that we need to improve. First and foremost I want to display some empty slots uh, for the missing items so that we would fill in the whole thing and also another thing is if we would walk up to it and sell stackable items you can see that these items are not stacking at all. So we want to fix that so that these items would get stacked. Also we have this issue that if we would buy item and place it right on our character the money does not get removed and the items still stay in the shop so basically we are duplicating some items. Let's begin by fixing the duplication issues. Probably what we want to do is open up our UI inventory panel as a reference so here on drop event you can see that we are doing a switch depending on the source and then whether we move the item around if it's from the player slots or equipment or inventory and if it's coming from the shop then we are creating this confirm buy widget which allows us to actually pay for our goods. So let's recreate the same thing in every single place where we have the slots. So let's go to our player slots first and in the graph we have our on drop event which is simply moving the items so what we can do instead is simply copy these nodes right here and now let's move this out of the way delete this one paste these in just like we created in the previous video so we have a source connect the item connect the sources to the target connect the item index slot index and the direction in this case is not the inventory it is the uh, player since we are moving this to the player slots and let's make sure we connect the player on the confirm by the item index the slot index item itself source let's make sure we connect all the regular pins perhaps it's not too important but it's good to notify the system that the on drop event has been completed now I got an error because I need to reconnect the player on the move item as well so make sure you reconnect all the pins that are necessary to be reconnected just like I have and also for the create widget uh, let's copy the direction as well to be the player. Now let's look for another widget with, with, we, which would be our UI equipment slots and in this widget right here we have exactly the same issue so let's make sure we copy all of these nodes I'm gonna just simply copy all the back end delete these ones right here paste these ones in and I forgot to copy the switch so let's make sure we do that as well so the player equipment and the inventory goes to the top shop goes to the bottom uh, default goes to the end and let's make sure to reconnect this failed cast as well connect the tag to the selection for the string switch and connect the item connect the source connect the index slot index and the direction in this one is the equipment so I'm gonna copy that to the bottom node as well equipment let's connect our player item slot index item index uh, and the source to the tag there we go so now everything should be working just fine and again I'm forgetting to connect my third person character references to the target nodes for the functions that are inside of our third person characters so now that we have this fix out of the way let's now work on our AI so that it is allowed to stack items so let's go to our AI shop Actually, and over here we have these very simple events as of right now sell item which simply adds an entry to an RI and one that simply removes an entry from an RI let's first work on the adding part so let's create uh, let's see so let's start working in here and then we can make this into a separate function so let's break these things right here now from the data table let's get our data table row and then we need to copy our S inventory structure from somewhere so let's go to our third person character which is this guy right here and over here on add item to equipment we can copy our S inventory slot structure type this inventory structure and here what we want to do is we want to check if we can stack this item so let's see if we can stack the item then if we can't stack then probably we want to find a stack but first let me simply select all of these nodes and let's collapse to function and let's call this add item 
yeah, just add item seems to be a good name. Now this means that we have way less nodes in our event graph. So for our find item function, let's create one. So find, let's call this find stack, and let's see. This needs an input, which is our item. So we have our s slots structure type. Now from this one, we want to break this. We want to break the item itself. And then we want to get our inventory and we want to do a loop for each with a break. There we go. So we have that. And what we want to check for is that. So let's break this slot structure, break the item. And we want to look for items with exactly the same row names. So let's make sure that this row name is equal to the one that we are providing from the input. Then we can do an if branch check to see if we are successful with finding a stackable item. And then we need a couple of local variables. So let's call this local found, which is a boolean. Then we need the local index of the item, so integer. And now let's make sure to set both of these on true. So local found will be true since we found an item and the local index is going to be the index from the array. Then from over here, we can directly go to the break. And once we have breaked the loop, we can then do another if branch check from the complete. So let's do an if and let's see if we found something. Now on both of these, we want to return so let's create two of these nodes and we need a couple of outputs. So the first one is going to be, let's call this success, which is a boolean. And then we need another one. Whoops, not the input. We need the output. So let's create an output and let's call this index, which is an integer. And now for the true route, we can return our local found and our local index. For the other one, we simply return false. Now let's go back to our add item function and let's see. So here on true, if this is stackable, then we want to find a stack. Let's provide our items. So to make life easier for us, perhaps let's promote this to a local variable and let's call this the local item connect the executions the way they were. And I'm also going to reconnect this as slots to come from over here. And now this is going to look something like this for me. So now from the find item, we can provide our local item. And then we want to do a if branch check. And on true, what we want to do is get our inventory and we want to set the RI element and the index on this one is the one from the find stack. And on the item, we want to make the S slots structure type. And to make one, we need to get the original one. So let's get our inventory again. Let's get this and then let's get a copy of the found index right here. Then let's split this because what we want to do is connect the item. We want to connect the type and for the amount, we want to do a plus. So I've moved these around a little bit. So amount plus integer plus integer. And this is going to be the end value. But for the bottom part, we want to break the local item. So let's break the local item and connect its amount. So basically we are adding the current amount plus the amount that is getting provided from the outside. So now we set up the new amount. Now on the false, uh, everything is quite a bit more simple. We want to get this and we simply want to add on this false. And we also want to add on the other false, uh, since in this case, the item is not stackable. So we can simply add a new entry to the array. And over here, we cannot find the existing stack. So simply we provide a new entry for this one. So the entry is our local item. So that's as simple as it gets for the add item function. Now let's work on our remove item function. And over here, what we want to do is actually provide a new input for this one. So let's go to our AI interactions interface. Let's look for our buy item and let's add a new entry to this and let's call this item. 
and this is going to be the S slot structure type which is going to provide us with the amount that is necessary to be removed. Now for our buy items function let's see first what we probably want to do is remove these nodes right here and we probably want to split our item. Then as our inventory we want to get a copy to this index that is getting provided then let's split this and let's see first let's do a if branch check because we want to check if the amount of the items that we have right now is bigger than the amount that is required so let's do that and if that is true then from our inventory we want to set the array element on true let's connect the index and let's make the S slots structure type. Now for this one we want to use the current amount minus the amount that is required and this is going to be our amount and then we can recon reconnect from our get we can reconnect our item and our type. Now since as of right now we can only buy one item at a time uh, the only thing that left for us to do on false, so that means that the amount is not bigger than the zero, so it means it will probably be zero. So that means that over here we can simply remove the index for our inventory array and use the index from the input. And later on uh, in the following videos we shall set up a system which will allow us to select the amount of items that we want to buy at a time or move between our inventories at a time and it's simply gonna have a limit uh, depending on how many items we have. And the last thing that's left for us actually to do is provide this uh, item to our buy items function which is in our third person character. As of right now you can see that the item is being created empty so let's make sure we connect it like so in our server buy items function. And now we need to look for a place where we run our server buy items. And that should be in our confirm buy so let's go to our UI confirm buy and in the graph you can see we have our server by items and now this needs to have an item provided so we can connect our item variable like so there we go compile and save this and now everything should be working just fine and like I usually say let's test things out on our client side so let's pick up some non-stackable and perhaps some stackable items let's go to the store let's try to sell one log there we go, one log sold, two logs, three logs, so we have four and three, so let's move one back. We have two over here, five over here, let's move this back, so we have six and one, and now everything seems to be working just fine. Now the last thing left for us to do is populate our shop widget with some empty uh, slot icons. So what I'm going to do is go to my UI shop panel which is over here, UI shop panel which contains our slots. So now in the graph you can see that we are running a loop through our inventory which is now uh, populating our widget with the item data widgets. Now for this one we need a new variable and let's call this uh, slots created perhaps. Let's make this into an integer and this is going to measure the amount of slots that we have provided. Now what I want to do is at the end of every loop over here I want to increment this. So slots created let's do a plus plus so increment integer which automatically adds one to our variable. Now on the complete completion of the loop we want to do a if branch check and what I want to check for is that these slots created are bigger or equal excuse me for my mistake instead of bigger or equal we simply need to check whether if it's bigger to a specific amount so let's try the amount to be uh, so I have four slots in a row something that I can divide with four let's say 20 uh, if this is false then I want to do a loop regular flow control for loop with integers and over here what I want to do is for the first index I want to use my slots created and for the last one I'm gonna use 20 since I want 20 slots to be populated then I want to create a widget just like we do up here and then on this one I want to create the UI item data and provide this with an empty item so let's make our item 
So let's make this. Let's make sure we select the item database and type in empty since we want to populate with the empty item. And for the index, we can leave this empty. Now, and another thing that we want to do is set the columns and rows. So let's make sure we copy these top nodes right here to the bottom like so, so that we can actually do the math. There we go. So let's connect the content to the return value of the widget. Let's make sure that just like over here we are adding plus one. So let's do a plus plus on our slots created over here. And now for the uh, calculation of our rows and columns over here in this empty value right here, let's connect our slots created. So this is our index. And then simply we can compile and save this, press play, walk up to the store. And I have one extra slot, so probably 20 wasn't a good value. I guess it should be been a 19 instead. So minus one. And now everything should be looking the way I wanted it to look. There we go. So let's add an item. There we go, add another item, and as you can see, the slots do not get more or less, they stay 20 until we fill out the entire shop. So this shop has a little bit different features than our backpack. Basically that our store can hold up uh, to as many items as it wants, and once it goes over the 20 slots mark, it just simply adds new entries, and everything is working just fine. And also, as you can see, if we remove the unnecessary items, it creates the empty slots back to the panel. So that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, uh, perhaps support me on Patreon. And if you have any more questions, suggestions, or just want to chat with other developers, make sure you join my Discord channel and I see you guys in the next video.